Good afternoon, uh, First Lutheran Facebook friends. Uh, Pastor Brian here, uh, coming to you here uh, this first midweek time of prayer in the year of 2022. Uh, it's winter, it's sunny out, and the grass is green, but uh, the temperatures say otherwise, and the fireplace behind is warming my back. Uh, I, my message today is, it's the beginning of a new year, so it'd be a great opportunity to talk about uh, what that means and our hopes for the future, and there certainly are reasons to be hopeful for what's to come in 2022. Uh, but today I want to use this opportunity to make sure, first and foremost, to lift up uh, the ongoing concerns with this Omicron variant spreading. Uh, it's, uh, I have been, I put my confidence and trust in the experts. I've tried to do that as much as possible. Uh, I haven't always made the best choices personally myself. That's how I got COVID. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, it's a balance of living in the world and not letting the pandemic uh, stop us from uh, continuing on with our lives. But there are some things that we can do to mitigate those risks, uh, to keep each other safe. Uh, but we have to turn somewhere for that guidance. And for me, it's uh, Michael Osterholm. Uh, he's an ELCA Lutheran, graduate of Luther College in Decorah, Iowa. And he is the director of the uh, of CIDRAP, Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy, uh, based out of the University of Minnesota, up in Minneapolis. And he, uh, I guess, one way to establish his credentials is just by uh, in, in April of 2020, when the pandemic began, he predicted that within 18 months there could be 800,000 deaths because of the pandemic, because of COVID, and. What happened was uh, he was wrong. He was off 18 months later from when he made that prediction. There were actually 793,000 deaths. Uh, it's it's uh, unfortunate that he was right on that, but he was off just by 7,000 uh, on that estimate 18 months before. And for me, I hear someone like that and say, we should pay attention to someone who can make that. And that's one example of many, many times where uh, Dr. Osterholm has been spot on, if you will. Uh, early in December, he's known, credited, or uh, chided and made fun of because he predicted a viral blizzard uh, in with the Omicron. And he identified the concerns that because of the spread, uh, people wouldn't be as sick, but services would be disrupted, hospitals would be overwhelmed, teachers and staff would be out, and schools would have to close up. And we're seeing exactly that. Uh, the disruption of services because the rampant spread of the virus, of this Omicron strain in particular. So again, he has proven himself right. And uh, with experts, uh, I find it helpful to take their information and then respond to it. Uh, you don't kind of discount it. You say, well, that's the fact. What do I get to do with that now? So with that comes not only him, but others are saying is it's time to switch from this familiar shape mask, this cloth mask that's so popular, these surgical masks, uh, many of you have white ones and blue and uh, to move to, I have now was able to purchase because they're available, a KN95 mask, uh, which is a higher level of protection because these, uh, I'm told and I trust, are not as effective on the Omicron st strain. So this is the one I've switched to. I encourage you to do likewise if you're around people. Uh, an example of I've been wearing that house mask here in the house uh, when I'm around my wife because she contracted the COVID virus uh, on the way home from a Christmas gathering last week. And uh, two other people in our house also tested positive for COVID. I was COVID positive uh, just before Thanksgiving uh, after attending a funeral in Michigan. And so it's, it's not something that we can hide from, uh, we can, but we can do our best to avoid it. Uh, also, we can mitigate how severe it is. Uh, Monday, today's Wednesday, so 48 hours ago, I got my booster shot. So I'm double vax and boosted. I guess they call that triple vax now. Uh, so I'm hopeful that in the coming weeks, my uh, protection will increase, And uh, uh, but I still need to be careful. Just because I'm double vaxxed and boosted does not mean I cannot catch the Omicron variant uh, again here, even if I was just infected uh, around Thanksgiving time. Uh, it's, it's that infectious, so I, I lift up caution. We listen to uh, not only national experts, but our local experts, our medical professionals in our congregations, we have them. I think of uh, Jess O'Rourke and Jeff Zanger, uh, Katie and Patricia, uh, those four in particular who last week after worship on our Zoom coffee hour spoke of the dire conditions in the ICUs of our hospitals. 
uh, not having capacity and our hospitals being overwhelmed or uh, hospital departments being closed because they don't have staff. So uh, we're all in this together. This surge hopefully will be like South Africa, a big spike. And then by the end of January, February, it'll come back down to uh, pre-Omicron levels. So I, I, I invite you to take this surge seriously, uh, to do your best to mitigate the risk of not only yourself getting infected, but also spreading it to others. Uh, it, it might not be as deadly. That's been said over and over, but that doesn't mean it's not deadly for people who have uh, compromised immune systems or comorbidities or who are not vaccinated. Uh, that is uh, our mindfulness as care for our neighbor uh, in our faith. With that, the impacts of this virus too are personal. It, it uh, uh, comes around that my, my cousin, uh, Joe, his wife, Hope, died unexpectedly of a heart attack last week and the funerals this Friday in south of Lexington, Kentucky, but none of his family will be there for the service and graveside because of the COVID uh, uh, implications for his family members who have to travel from a distance. I'm planning to attend, but just the graveside ceremony outside. So quite a drive just to go to a graveside ceremony, but to turn around and come back. Uh, but because of COVID, that's uh, the best we can uh, hope for in the situation. Also, my mother, uh, she, uh, news on that, thank you for prayers over the, over the months as she's journeyed with cancer, has, uh, has entered hospice. Uh, uh, and so the concerns about how can we travel out there to see her uh, with this Omicron spreading around. The virus still has us. That can be a source of discouragement. Uh, it's, it's, we've, we've learned how to do this, uh, but we can continue to work through this together uh, and look for the hope uh, on the horizon. Uh, with that, beyond uh, Omicron talk, we can lift up other things of, of prayer concerns. We have the Boulder fire, uh, Boulder, Colorado. Pray for the uh, lives that were uh, devastated by the destruction of homes and communities. Uh, they continue recovering in Kentucky from the tornadoes. Uh, we lift those up. Uh, we also lift up prayers for individuals. Uh, as I mentioned, mom entering into hospice uh, here the day after Christmas. Uh, prayers for her as she uh, enters a new stage of this journey in life for her uh, and, and uh, uh, finds her faith strengthen her each and every day. Uh, I lift up uh, Charlie and Bernie Bell. Uh, Bernie is in Atlanta and Charlie's driving back down today uh, to be with her and, and uh, she's going through treatments and uh, so we continue to pray for them. Uh, we pray for the family of uh, Bill Walburn, Bill Walburn who entered hospice, a friend, a friend, a friend of uh, the Kazakh family. Uh, we lift up those who have COVID, as I mentioned in my own household, uh, for, for continued recovery from that uh, and, and hope and pray that uh, it's not more severe than what we are experiencing so far. Uh, we pray for those who are uh, in the front lines of hospitals, medical institutions, uh, as they grow weary of this journey. We pray for the return to school efforts, uh, administrators and teachers, uh, bus drivers and cafeteria workers and custodial staff. Uh, that they would uh, be safe, uh, that our students would be uh, safe and protected, uh, that they would also be encouraged in their life as youth and children. Uh, so there are many things uh, to be mindful of and to lift up. Where do we find hope in all this? It's going to all be discouraging, as I mentioned already, but, but it's a new year. And New Year's mean new beginnings. Uh, that's, uh, we saw that kind of fresh start, if you will, yesterday in Washington Park when uh, Aftab Piravel was inaugurated as and sworn in as the new mayor of Cincinnati, along with a significant portion of the city council. Uh, certainly seems to be a significant reset on the leadership in our city. That is exciting just because, and it's not, nothing else for fresh perspectives uh, and, and new leadership. And we can hope that God will bless their leadership and uh, in, our, in our years ahead. Uh, we also uh, give thanks for the, the beginning of, of, of this year, 2022, and uh, because we are confident that God blesses us, that God will not forsake us, that God watches over us. Uh, and a taste of that could be our relationship with the Philippus Church community. Uh, we, at the beginning of the year last year, we would never imagine this where we are now, but now we find ourselves worshiping with a, uh, a, a this new faith community. And it's fun to see where these relationships, how they are growing and developing. An example of that is we've we're working on forming a, a COVID task force, uh, two members from each church so that they can, uh, medical people who can provide guidance on when we should get back together. We're worshiping virtually now, uh, live streaming worship with a few worship leaders gathering to live stream that from the church, but also on Zoom. Uh, but when will we return? When will it be safe to do so? 
that's been a question ongoing throughout this pandemic. And, and so we're going to partner with Philippus to have a team that will make that decision together and inform our leadership and the congregations about that so it's done safely. Uh, I'm excited to see where that relationship goes and develops further as the year uh, moves ahead. Uh, we look forward to, to having resolution to our uh, situation with the bell tower and, and returning into our building so that we can once again continue the ministry at 1208 Ray, Ray, Ray Street. So thank you for your continued prayers there. Uh, with that, I uh, would now like to invite you to uh, prepare your hearts as we join together for this time of prayer. Gracious God, we uh, come to you in prayer this afternoon. The sun's shining. It's the beginning of a new year, and we give you thanks for that, uh, a promise that uh, you watch over us, uh, that you desire to bless us. Uh, may we claim that. Uh, but we also uh, come to you, and out of the brokenness of our world, uh, we lift up the ongoing pandemic and the challenges it brings to us, our community, uh, uh, medical and physical, but also emotional, relational uh, challenges it brings. Uh, watch over us and sustain us and give us perseverance uh, during this particular month of January. We pray for uh, medical workers, teachers, staff, uh, students. Uh, we lift up uh, the people of Boulder, Colorado and Kentucky as they recover from the impact of natural disasters on their lives, uh, disrupting their lives and their communities and overturning their worlds. Uh, bring support to those who are in need. Uh, we pray for those who are in specific needs of healing, uh, encouragement. We pray for Bill Walburn and, and Pat Ferguson as they have entered into hospice. We pray for those who are infected with COVID. We pray for uh, Joe uh, and his loss of his wife, Hope. Uh, comfort him and his family in this moment of grief and sorrow. Uh, we pray for, uh, again, the Philippus and First Faith communities as we journey together. Uh, and we lift up uh, the Mayor Piravel as he begins his term as mayor of Cincinnati and the newly uh, in elected city council members as they were uh, installed yesterday. Uh, give to them wisdom and discernment and encourage them in their leadership uh, that all, might people, all people might be served in equality here in our city of Cincinnati. Uh, gracious God, we pray all this in your son's name. And Jesus, uh, be with us, watch over us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for joining me uh, this, for this noontime prayer. I look forward to being with you on Sunday. It's a baptism of our Lord Sunday. Uh, worship is at 11 o'clock. Uh, live stream with uh, a Zoom worship as well. So your choice on that one. Go in peace. Share the love of God. Thanks be to God.